All right, welcome back to another edition of Catching Up with the Cats presented by Atrium Health. Today's guest is Hedman soccer coach Mike Bapst. Mike, how we doing? We're good. We're good. I wish what, the weather was a little better today, but hanging in there. What's, uh, what's quarantine life been like in the Bapst house? Or should I say, uh, are, are you getting any sleep these days? Uh, getting some. It's a regular. Uh, yeah, we've, we've got two... Well, twin newborns that are uh, two months old, who you may hear in the background, they're on their morning nap, uh, and one two-year-old. So it's, uh, we live according to their schedule. So every day is kind of according to their sleep and whether it's nice outside. Today, unfortunately, we're locked in all day, so we're completely at their mercy. Now, I, w- I was telling my wife the other day that, you know, we're in a profession where we're gone a lot. We're on the road quite a bit. But this, this time is actually, you know, valuable because you do actually get to spend time with your family. Yeah. And I, I mean, such a great time to be around. I mean, we're not not missing anything with these two. You know, we would be this time of the year, be on the road, like certainly starting Memorial Day kicks off a pretty big recruiting uh, stretch where be out and you know it's as much as uh, like getting out on the road and seeing players it is nice being home and it's nice for my wife too if I was leaving for three or four days at a time and she had to manage the three of them I think it's that's a lot to take on so she's not ready for you to go back on the road like mine is <laughs> Uh, no, I think whatever little service I provide, I think is, is still of use. So yeah, we, no. so after, after six or seven years in, in Chicago, you know, which is completely different from, from where we are now, what are some things that you and the family like to do around the Davidson and Charlotte area? Uh, well, given the, um, limitations of the three kids, we've, we go for walks pretty regularly and the weather is accommodating. I mean, we've, we talk about, uh, we've talked about a number of times being in Chicago and being stuck in a small apartment. And, you know, I think a week or two ago, it was still snow in there and like being in a very congested city. It's, I mean, we, we've got a great appreciation for as many challenges as this time, uh, you know, has given us. It, it's, pretty fortunate to be in a town like Davidson. We're able to get outside and just even getting outside in the yard and playing or, or going for long walks. It's been, uh, it's been great given the, the ages of our children right now. Now pulling back the curtain a little bit on, on Mike Babs. Uh, I, I, I've got some sources that tell me that you're a, uh, a pretty big music fan. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. Got a, got, got a nice uh, record collection. When did this start? Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, it was when I was at South Carolina because uh, I would guess your source might be Spencer, my assistant. Shocking. Uh, <laughs> because we we bonded a lot in uh, Columbia over – he I got him into the uh, record collection, and uh, there was a great little record store in Columbia that we used to, to go to every once in a while. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good little diversion. Um, even Izzy, our, our two-year-old has got a few that she is a big fan of. So she usually dictates what's playing, but it's nice to have some good music out in the background. If you, if you had to single anybody out, you got any favorites? Um, I, I always, it's always tough to claim favorites, but, um, you know, I'd say like over the last 15, 20 years, uh, the, the national i don't know if you know them at all i do uh, not but like, spencer wanted me to bring up blink 182 <laughs> don't i don't have any of their stuff on vinyl <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> i'm not i'm not opposed to it you know I, i'm not offended by it but it's uh it hasn't made it into the record collection so growing up in the pittsburgh area i assume you know like all you know pittsburgh natives you're big Steelers, penguins are you, are you pirates fan too yeah, I mean, a fan of all Pittsburgh sports. I grew up, um, my dad had Steeler season tickets since I think 70 or 71. So that was always the focus in our household. Um, and, but, you know, it's, I, I kind of 
sit on the bench with the Penguins and the Pirates. If they start getting things going, I'll start tuning in a little bit more. I, the Penguin Stanley Cup runs, I've, I, I follow. I just don't get into it during the regular season, but I love playoff hockey. And, you know, it's once every two decades when the Pirates have a good season, I'll, I'll tune in and watch a few games. Now, this, this may offend a lot of the, the Northeasterners, but I, um, I love Pittsburgh, and I think Pittsburgh is one of the great, genuine, true sports towns in, in America. Um, mm-hmm. And one thing that we go up there and, you know, play Duquesne and anything, we always have to stop at Primanti Brothers for Jamie Hendricks because he can, you know, he'll eat two or three while we're there, and he'll take two or three for the it's road. Impressive. So, yeah. um, you know, you've been in Chicago, you've been in Pittsburgh, you know, do you have a preference of Primanti Brothers or, or deep dish pizza? Uh, yeah, definitely Primanti's. Um, I mean, I, I'm not a huge fan of deep dish pizza. We actually, Chicago's got a, a number of other styles of pizza that are really good, like good pizza shops that we had in the neighborhood that I preferred. I, I never really, a deep dish is just, it's too heavy. I just can't, you know, you just feel feel sick after like a slice and a half uh, but yeah Primanti's grew up with Primanti's and when I was growing up it was uh I think there were only two Primanti's in town there was one in the strip district and there was one in Oakland and and now they're everywhere they got them on all the stadiums they got them on the south side there they're, they're, they're in the airport <laughs> yeah yeah so, yeah. so are, you a, are you a slaw guy with the with the Primanti brothers what's your go-to oh yeah yeah I, I get it with everything okay all right, yeah. that's, uh, that's all the fun stuff I've got for you now. Uh, we'll shift gears uh, to, um, to the soccer side of things. You know, you just completed your, your first year, and though some results may not have gone how you had, you had hoped, um, but you've got to be pretty pleased with the fight your guys showed until the end. They never gave up, and they kept fighting towards the end to where they earned themselves a spot in the, in the A-10 tournament. Yeah, it really ended on a positive note, which was a, a credit to – the resiliency of the guys over the season. I mean, it, it was, you know, I, I can't think of a season that I've coached that we've had players that have had to deal with more as far as injuries and adversity and, you know, just, you know, the momentum thing of getting on a good run and, and getting on a, a run where you just, the breaks aren't going your way. Um, and I, I think the great takeaway of this group was how they continued to show up after tough results or, you know, practices where we got five or six guys standing on the sideline injured and, and they had a great mentality and kept getting after it. Um, and I think that that carried into the spring and I, you know, I really do believe that the, you know, a lot of the difficult things you go through, if you maintain your commitment to each other and, and your belief in what we're doing and you still have a passion for it, that that's, that gives you an edge going into the next season. You know, I, I think it, you know, the, the adversity that we've had to deal with, it, it just, I, I think, increases the commitment to, to making sure that we are more in control of the things that we control. And that, that leads me to my next question. When you're building a program, how important is it to, to remain patient and, and stay the process and trust the course? Uh, you have to, and especially in a sport like soccer where the, the margins are, are so slim. You know, uh, you could have um, a season where you really get fortunate that, and, you know, that flips like three or four results and you can have it go the other way. Um, and, I, and I think it's, it's one of the really interesting challenges coming into a new program is, is getting to – to know the players and getting to know the environment and sort of the competition and, and, you know, the tweaks that you've got to make to the process that really give us the best chance to be successful, you know? So I think that um, the process that, that we have is we're just going to continue to hone it. And, um, you know, really, I think as we get things more and more things, right, the belief will increase and, and, you know, the negative results should be more infrequent that, you know, the belief is that if we keep doing the right things that we'll, we'll keep getting the right results. How have you and your staff handled uh, this time as far as, you know, maintaining contact and communication with, with, your, uh, with your players? Uh, we, we started out 
kind of with just the the weekly Zoom and you know just checking in on on guys who've had some individual ones. Um, you know, I, I think tried to move things away from just the the focus of uh, soccer as much as just making sure that we're we're all healthy, we're supporting each other, we're staying connected, uh, and you know, look forward to now that finals are over. I mean, getting back into a rhythm with that. Um, and I think it's been an opportunity for us to step back as a team and, and really talk about why we do this and how we want to do it and give the guys some input on it. And, and you know, hopefully they've got a little bit more time to, to think about it. And, you know, uh, something like this, I think, really helps to give people, people perspective on, you know, what's important and, and, you know, why you put so much energy into something like this. And I, I think there's a lot of teams that are more focused on the personal side of things instead of the actual sport or the ones that are going to come out ahead when, you know, they step back on the field or the court next season. That more things are put in perspective. Yeah, it's – I mean, like so many things, it's it's about the strength of the relationships. And, and you know, I, I think we've all got to um, come through something like this real – realizing how important it is to have you know 30 people that are there to support you and that you know no matter what the struggle is you're not going to be alone and you know I think it just when we step out and compete I think it just increases the the level of fight that you have because you're you know you realize how much other people are there for you so you're everyone is is not thinking about themselves or kind of doing it for the the guy next to them. And, you know, you hope that going through something like this, that only adds to, to that, that feeling within the team, which is ultimately win or lose. If you get that, it's, it's going to be a really meaningful experience. Well, we won't keep you any longer. We know you got your hands full. Uh, we hope you and your yep. family stay safe and uh, look forward to seeing everybody back in the office here soon. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Joe. Good catching right. up. Thanks, Mike. I'll see you.